Hi there, it's Asia, and I've prepared for you a lot of exciting things in this video. First of all, I've selected the most difficult IELTS speaking part 1 questions that students reported in recent exams. Indeed, some topics really surprised me. You will hear questions, sample answers, and learn useful vocabulary to improve your answers. Then there is a new PDF with IELTS writing and speaking topics for you to download. All the topics are from recent exams. And I'm launching a new Telegram channel about IELTS preparation. And there is a draw where you can win our IELTS preparation courses for free. That's a lot. Let's get started. And the first topic is furniture. And the first question is, do you have a lot of furniture at home? I would say we have enough, but not a lot. There is everything we need to live comfortably, including several large wardrobes to store all our belongings, but there is still space in each room. Okay, here is some vocabulary. First of all, the word furniture is uncountable. If you want to mention one, say a piece of furniture. Wardrobe is what you have in your bedroom, and cupboard is what you have in your kitchen. And a good expression is to store your belongings or to keep your things. The next question is, what is your favorite piece of furniture? Well, it must be our sofa. It's my favorite place to snug up on and enjoy cozy nights in while we can't go out because of the lockdown. To snuggle up on a sofa means to get into a warm and comfortable position next to someone else. We snuggled up together on the sofa. A night indoors or a night in, it means that you stay at home rather than go out. The next question is, could you describe it? Examiners always check if you use topic-specific vocabulary because it's a chance for them to assess how many words you know. So if you can go into detail on a certain topic and use more specific words, do that. I'll give you an example. Here is my answer. Uh, it's a pretty standard three-seater sofa from IKEA. It's light green in color and has a clean, minimalistic design. I particularly like that it's a chaise long on one side where I can sit and stretch out my legs. A three-seater sofa is a sofa for three people. And you may have a two-seat or a two-seater sofa. You may have a corner sofa and a chaise long is this long seat where you can stretch your legs horizontally. <laughs> That's my sofa. Okay, the next question is, have you ever received furniture as a gift? I don't think so. To be honest, I can't really think of any occasion when someone would give me a table or a bed as a present. I think that's something people generally prefer to choose themselves. Well, during your exam, you should try to give an open answer to each question. So in my example, the answer was very short. No, I don't think so. And then I expanded it by telling what I think about the idea of receiving this kind of present in general. The next question is, what furniture would you like to buy? And that's an excellent opportunity to use a few more interesting words. Uh, let me give you a couple. So, a chest of drawers. A drawer is what you pull out and store your things inside. Another thing you may want to buy is a computer desk with storage to keep all your notebooks and stationery in. Stationery is everything you use for writing, your pens, paper, and so on. The next topic is even more unusual, but before we continue, I'd like to announce a special giveaway. Three winners will get access to all my IELTS writing and speaking courses for free. If you'd like to participate, 
subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed already and leave me a comment with the hashtag contest. That's very important. You should say when you're planning to take your IELTS exam. I will randomly select three winners who will get my IELTS academic or general pack with all the courses to prepare for IELTS writing and speaking. The winners will be announced in two weeks. Okay, let's continue. Our next topic is trees. Usually IELTS topics are reused for quite a long time. So if a topic was popular last year, it's still likely to be used today. But this one seems to be brand new. The first question is, do you love trees? Absolutely. I live in a city, so it's always pleasant to see a piece of greenery amongst all the brick and concrete. Actually, I think I can sense that the air near the parks is cleaner. Greenery is attractive green leaves and plants. For example, uh, you can talk about flowers and greenery. And brick and concrete is what we build our cities from. Next. Do you have trees around your house? Yes, indeed. Uh, we have beautiful cherry trees growing along the road on one side of the building, and there is a little wood on the other side. I'm lucky to live in a very green area. So what's the difference between a wood and a forest? A forest is always large and a wood can be small. Ours is tiny, but it's still a wood. Okay, what trees are common in your country? And that's a question that really calls for some names, some specific vocabulary. So here are six types of trees for you. Birch trees, maple trees, palm trees, pine trees, sakura, or if you don't have sakura, cherry trees, and oaks. Memorize these words. They will come really handy if you get this topic. Let's continue. Have you ever planted a tree? I haven't yet, but I'm hoping to do it soon. This year we bought a Christmas tree planted in a pot. At the moment it's still on our balcony, but we need to buy a shovel and arrange a new home for it in our garden. A pot plant is a house plant. So we bought our Christmas tree in a pot as a pot plant. Let me give you some words to describe trees. So roots are the part of the tree that's underground. Then we have the trunk, the thick central part. Branches, leaves, fruit. And finally, canopy. That's all the branches and leaves. So a tree may have a leafy canopy or a thick canopy of branches. The next question is, have you climbed trees before? I leave it for you to answer because I want to spend more time on the next surprising topic. But first, let me tell you about the new PDF guide that I have for you. It contains IELTS writing and speaking topics used in recent exams. And I think there is really a lot of value in knowing what kind of questions students get these days and prepare for those questions. You might have heard that I'm launching a new Telegram channel about IELTS preparation. It's called Fast Track IELTS but the link is unfortunately IELTS fast track because someone's taken my name. Anyway, if you go to the channel, you see the PDF pinned at the very top and I'll be happy to see you on Telegram. The next topic is quite surprising. It's farming. Have you ever visited a farm? I've been to several farms, but if you mean a visit more like a tour with explanations, then no. I stayed at a B&B on a farm once. A B&B is bed and breakfast. 
That's when people rent out rooms in their house for people to stay in and provide breakfast. Next. What did you learn about the farm during your visit? Well, it was a farm in Cornwall in southwest England and I learned that farming is a really tough business. I mean, it's difficult for small farmers to generate enough profit to live well. And that's why our hosts decided to run a bed and breakfast to supplement their income. Next, what changes are required in farming? I think farmers need to embrace all the new technologies and trends that can help them increase their profitability. For example, by growing organic food, they could earn more. A smart government regulation is required too. Farmers should be encouraged to reduce the use of pesticides and to use more eco-friendly sustainable practices. Well, that's quite a long answer for part one, but I wanted to give you a few ideas. So you can talk about the use of technology in farming that can increase harvest. You can talk about organic farming or food without pesticides and eco-friendly sustainable farming or practices. And the next question is, why is farming important? Well, farming is a crucial sector of our economy. We wouldn't last for too long without food. So it's safe to say that our lives depend on farming. Would you like to live on a farm? I've never lived in the countryside, not even talking about farms. So it would definitely be a step outside my comfort zone. I'm afraid I would also find it very difficult to get up at dawn. So my answer is no, I prefer to live in the city. If you talk about countryside, you mean land outside of cities and you may live in a countryside, but not on a farm. To step outside of my comfort zone. A comfort zone is a situation when you feel comfortable and maybe a little bit too comfortable. And to get up at dawn or to rise with the sun. Our next topic is advice. And that's a word in which so many people make mistakes. Believe it or not, but in English, advice is uncountable. So you can't use it with an indefinite article F and you can't make it plural. Let's have a look at the questions. Do you often ask for advice? Not really. I'm very much a DIY person and I like to find my own answers to most questions. Of course, sometimes I still want to discuss a certain situation with my family or friends and find out what they think. DIY is do it yourself. So if you're a DIY person, you like doing everything yourself. Okay, the next question is, do you like giving advice to other people? I must admit, I quite enjoy telling people what I think they should do. At the same time, I know that unsolicited advice is not welcome. So I try to give my opinions with consideration. Unsolicited advice is advice no one asked for. And I'm sure you felt yourself that unsolicited advice is not always welcome. The next question is, would you pay for advice? Absolutely. In many cases, paying for professional advice can save a lot of time and money. For example, I use services of immigration lawyers several times to clarify certain questions I had. Good advice is never cheap, but I'm sure for serious matters, not taking it could be much more costly. The vocabulary is to save time and money, it's a fixed expression, and a costly mistake, 
costly means expensive and also causing problems. So taking a consultation may be expensive in terms of money, but not taking it may be even more costly because you may lose money and you may get a lot of problems out of it. Okay, these are our topics for today. You may find more IELTS speaking and writing topics from recent exams in the PDF guide that you can download on my new Telegram channel. The link is in the video description box below. And don't forget to take part in the draw for a chance to win all our IELTS speaking and writing courses for free. You need to be subscribed to this channel and leave a comment with the hashtag contest saying when you're taking your IELTS exam. I'd like to thank everyone who helped me by posting their recent exam questions. Thank you guys and thank you for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!